fire erupts at 3.30 a.m. on November 21, 2016 in a duplex on the 100 block of East Columbia Street in Flora, Indiana. The fire would claim the lives of four young girls. This is the case of the Flora girls. Kiana, Kiera, Kiriel, and Kioni Ranging in ages from 5 to 11, became trapped inside their home when a fire broke out in the early hours of November 21st of 2016. Their mother awoke to thick smoke and ran outside for help. She had been seriously injured by the fire. Um, police arrived before firefighters, and two officers tried to save the girls from the home, but they were injured in trying to do so, and they were unable to get the girls out. Firefighters arrived shortly after, and they were able to retrieve the girls, but unfortunately, they were unable to revive them. The four sisters died from asphyxiation due to smoke inhalation. Neighbors remembered hearing the mother, Galen Rose, screaming for help and hearing her girls screaming from inside the home where they were trapped. They said that they would never be able to forget those screams. On the day of the fire, it was stated that no foul play was suspected and no accelerants had been found in the home by canine units. They were investigating the electrical wiring for a point of origin. That day, the Carroll County School District canceled after-school activities for the week, and they offered access to grief counselors for students and community members. Now, the next day, it was stated that the fire may have started behind the refrigerator, and there was a smoke detector in the home that was discovered to have had no batteries. Community members described the girls as happy children, and they were respectful and happy to help people. Um, the small town was devastated by the loss of these four wonderful girls, and it wasn't even until January 2017, two months after the fire, that it was publicly stated that the fire had been set intentionally. Um, statements claimed that there were several locations in which accelerants had been found in the home. At this point, there were no leads, however. Police asked anyone with any knowledge of who may have done this to call their tips into the state arson hotline, and they mentioned that there was a $5,000 reward being offered. Now, in June, the Indiana State Police were stating that they were watching certain persons of interest connected to the fire, but they were unable to provide any further information about that. Also in June, 13 WTHR news station revealed an investigation that they had been doing into the departments responsible for investigating the fire. They revealed that the announcement in January that accelerants were found in multiple locations in the home was not true. On February 8th of 2017, a private fire investigator working on the investigation into the origins of the fire emailed the fire marshal claiming that such statements were completely inaccurate and that the investigation had not actually been up to current standards and that the investigation was actually still looking for the origin of the fire. Um, this only added a large amount of confusion to the entire case, but that wasn't the end of it. 13 WTHR also discussed a possible conflict of interest that could have been complicating lines of communication about the investigation. Apparently, there was a complicated relationship between the State Fire Marshal's Office and the Indiana State Police. Now, Dennis Randall, one of the fire investigators, was married to a woman who had stolen um, a lot of money from an attorney that she was working for to pay off her own personal debts. And the man investigating that case was Greg Edwards, who also happened to be the lead investigator with the Indiana State Police on the Flora Fire. 13 WTHR stated that this previous conflict could have prevented proper communication during the fire investigation between the two departments. It was shortly after this news came to light that it was announced that there was only one area in the home where accelerants had actually been found, and it was also announced that Dennis Randall had resigned. That would not be the only resignation to hit Carroll County, however. It was also announced in November, just before the one-year anniversary of the fire, that Rob Ives, the county prosecutor, was retiring a year early from his term, um, which would take effect at the end of December. He said that he would only rescind his resignation if there was significant evidence that came to light so that they could charge somebody in either the Flora Girls' case or the case of the Delphi murders by the end of the year. In that same week, Adam Randall, which is Dennis Randall's son, resigned as the Carroll County Fire Department Chief, and no answers have been given as to why he resigned. 
Now, there is no doubt that much has happened since the fire that claimed these young girls' lives, but it has unfortunately brought us more questions than answers. Why have there been resignations with little to no answers as to why people are resigning? Why have investigators quickly jumped the gun? Why did they say that they believed there was no foul play um, in the fire when a proper investigation hadn't actually been conducted yet? Why would they then state that there were several locations of accelerants in the home when this was revealed to eventually not be true? Why would they change their statement to only one location of accelerants being present in the home? And why did it take them months before this correction came out? Another question that many people have asked is why is the Flora fire getting such little attention in comparison to the Delphi murders? As you may have heard me mention earlier, the fire and the Delphi girls' murders, Liberty German and Abigail Williams, took place in the same county in Indiana. The Delphi murders have received a lot of attention, but the Flora fire has received very little attention outside of their local media, which is a large reason as to why I wanted to cover this case. Um, I covered the Delphi murders two months ago when I started this channel, and I have been watching that case closely for months now, but it wasn't until I really started researching that case for the video that I even heard about the Flora Fire and the deaths of these four wonderful young girls. And if you want to know more about the Delphi murders, I will leave a link to that video up here as well as in the description box below. But please help me get this case out there. There is a grieving family trying to find out what happened to these wonderful, wonderful girls, and they deserve answers too. As far as I can tell from this investigation, they have received nothing but further questions to keep asking. So please, please do not let this case get swept under the rug, especially as there is so much transition going on in their community right now, and as it, it continues to be overshadowed by Libby and Abby's case, all of these families, all of them, deserve answers, but I fear that those answers won't come, especially if we don't keep this case alive and in the public's eye. So before I end this video, I just wanted to mention something really great that is going on in the Flora community. Community members have formed what is called the Flora's Four Angels Committee, and they have created a cookbook with over 200 recipes and a letter from Galen herself to help fundraise um, more money for the reward. Now, they have already sold 500 copies from what I can tell, and they ordered another 500 copies to continue selling through Christmas. Um, so if you guys want information, if you want to contact them, see if you can order a cookbook to help with the fundraising, um, that information is included in the article down below in my sources, which as always are pinned to the very top of the comment section under these videos. Um, so the article is the one that talks about the Flora Girls is cookbook, and if you guys wanted to contact them, see if you can help by ordering a book, go ahead and check that out down below. They're selling them for $10, but from what I can tell, they're asking for about two or three more if they have to mail them places. So thank you so much for watching today's video, and and for giving me the opportunity to get more attention to this case. If you have any possible information about the investigation, I urge you to call in the tip line at 1-800-382-4628. So please be respectful in the comments down below, you guys, and I will see you again on Friday for another new video. Bye, everyone.